Hey guys, it's Sigur262 and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing my very first World of Tanks review in a long time, as promised in my black market video, because after engaging with you guys here on my channel during the past few days that I've been covering the black market, it reminded me that there's a very strong and active community in World of Tanks still, and I would love to make content for you guys moving forward. Now, we are looking at the Super Hellcat. It was the anniversary reward vehicle for 2019. It is a tier 7 American tank destroyer. So every year World of Tanks celebrates their anniversary. These vehicles are awarded to players who have been with World of Tanks a certain number of years. I was here for 6 years so I got it. I don't know what the cutoff was. I just know that I have it. Since it's rewarded to players or veteran players, I'm sure a lot of people have it. But for those of you who don't or haven't seen this yet, I want to take a look at this very special and exclusive vehicle. Now, the most interesting thing about it so far is its new 3D model. Now, World of Tanks started doing this in 2018, but it really became popular in 2019 with a lot of their tanks, where instead of just adding cosmetics to premium vehicles, like on the Patton KR, which is a tier 8 premium, it's just a paint job, just cosmetic, these 3D skins actually changed the 3D model of the kit or of the vehicle that's why they're called 3d skins so they cannot be altered they cannot be changed none of these elements that you see on it can be removed that also means that you can't add camouflage or decals to this particular vehicle unfortunately if you are one of those players who enjoys a more environmentally uh, reflective scheme for your tanks white paint for snow etc however it does look really good it comes not only with a camouflage underneath the 3D elements, but as you can see, it has some um, World War II era stowing. It has a camouflage net. You cannot use this in game. If you want to, you're going to have to equip an actual camouflage net for your consumables. This is just for a cosmetic purposes. It has U.S. Army kit bags, a fuel tank, and some helmets. They put a crate on the top with the replacement for decal barrel, which is nice, and then some logs and extra shovels in the back. And the most noticeable is the pinup girl on the front of the tank with her black cat and devil's tail, obviously the personification of the Hellcat. That's probably going to be the most noticeable thing about this tank. Uh, it looks nice, I guess. It's a cool kit. I just imagine that once I'm in battle, a lot of people just kind of aim for this frontal plate because this is a very easy target to see. But it does look cool, and I do appreciate the time that World of Tanks put into it. Now, this vehicle doesn't come with anything special beyond a garage slot and a 100% trained crew. It's not a zero skill crew, which means you will have to select those skills and start from scratch. Um, most premium or exclusive crews are zero skill, which means they all come equipped with the ability to have one skill, 100% research at the time that you get it. That's cool, not make or break. I'm just happy to have a fully trained crew and a Hellcat because I've never played a Hellcat before. So let's go to the comparison. I'm gonna run down the stats there and then I'm gonna show you guys some gameplay of this tank. So first things first, I didn't configure the crew on any of these vehicles. The only thing I did configure was I gave the tier six Hellcat, which is the progression version of this, um, all upgraded parts. So it has the same gun, which is why the damage values are the same. And the, not the same turret. It's actually a different turret. I believe it's the tier 7 one. So it should be the same, but it looks just a little bit different. That's a model thing, not actually has anything to do with the stats. So average damage per shot for the Super Hellcat is going to be 240. Same thing for the upgraded tier 6 Hellcat or the standard tier 7 T25 slash 2. That's also the same for the Steyr Waffenträger, which is a premium tier 7 German tank destroyer. And it's going to beat out by almost 100 the Challenger, which is the tier 7 British tank destroyer. There's actually not a lot. There's only these three turreted tank destroyers at tier 7. There's a lot of great casemate tank destroyers like the ISU or... Uh, I forget what the Chinese one is, or the Yogged Panther, which is another German one. I didn't put them in because having a turret on your tank destroyer does make it play incredibly different than those vehicles, and so I just thought it would be fair to compare it with these. 
Now, average penetration is 167. That's slightly better than the standard Hellcat. I don't know why they did that. Maybe to be more enticing. It's also better than the standard T25-2. It's going to be a lot less than the Stryer Waffenträger, which gets 203. And then, of course, it beats the Challenger. I don't actually know a lot about the Challenger, but from what I hear and now what I'm seeing... It's heavily based on its actual vehicle. It's a tank destroyer based on the Cromwell. So it's low damage, low penetration, fast fire rate. Um, it really isn't going to hold up to any of the tanks in this comparison. But just for your knowledge and for the benefit of comparing it, it's here. Now the rate of fire is 7.8 rounds a minute, almost 8 rounds a minute. Which means it has a nice 7 second reload, which is 1 second better than the Hellcat and a little bit better than the T25. It's a lot better than the Boffin Traeger or a lot worse, I should say, which has a six second reload, and then the Challenger is the best at 4.3. Gun Traverse is 20 degrees per second. It's pretty good. It's only beaten by the Steyr Waffenträger. It gets the standard 10 degrees of gun depression. It only gets 17 of elevation, where most tank destroyer or American tank destroyers, you could say, get 20. The Steyr gets 45, which is incredible. I don't know why it would get 45, but it does, and that's nice. Aim time is 1.6 seconds. That's the same for the Hellcat and the T25. So you're not going to be able to snap shots, but it's certainly not slow. It's a very quick aim time. Still aim down sights because it's a tank destroyer, not a medium tank. So you're going to want to make sure that you're shooting in the right place, but you can adjust targets quickly. It's dispersion at 100 meters is 0 0.34, which is a little bit better than the T25, but not by much. And of course, worse than the Steyr, again, for an average DPM of 1,800, which is actually really strong, but compared to the Steyr or the Challenger, Challenger on the rate of fire, Steyr, just because it has some great gun stats, both get 2,000 DPM. Survivability, its armor is going to match the T25 identically, or I should say hit points, not armor. At 800 hit points, same thing with the Steyr. It's less than the Challenger. They gave that one more, and the reason the Hellcat has so few is just because it's tier 6. Uh, I don't really think that it's going to affect how this tank plays or how you play the Hellcat if you do have it. So if you missed out on this one, don't feel too bad. I feel like the Hellcat is still a great tank destroyer. certainly one of the most popular tank destroyers of all the tanks. Hull armor is going to be the same as the Hellcat, with 12 millimeters all around, very thin. The T25 gets 76, 50, and 38, 20, 10, and 8 on the Steyr, and then an amazing 88 millimeters of frontal armor, 50 on the side and 38 on the back of the Challenger. It's a very heavily armored tank destroyer. Maybe I'll do a review of that one later. But lightly armored. The turret armor on this is, again, going to be the same as the Hellcat, 76, 31, 127, which is going to be the best in the rear of all of them. And that is because, and I'll show you in the model, they do have a solid steel weight that was present on the real Super Hellcat to help manage the gun and the recoil of the gun. And so they modeled that into World of Tanks to still be solid steel. So it has amazing rear turret armor. Mobility... This is actually the most mobile of all the tank destroyers. It gets a really good weight load ratio. It's 19.54, 23 specific power with a top speed of 72. Uh, that's the same as the Hellcat, but it has worse specific power ratio, uh, ugh, specific power and worse weight ratios than this vehicle. It's going to be better than all the other tank destroyers, which are all incredibly heavy comparatively so don't get hit in this vehicle but just know that if you need to relocate with that 1.6 second aim time you're going to not only be able to relocate super fast but you're able to choose your targets very quickly so this is going to be a more aggressive style of tank destroyer even though it is still just a tank destroyer it gets 35 degrees per second of traverse speed which is very fast faster than both the hellcat and the t25 and the challenger but again slower than the Steyr has got to be just an incredible tank destroyer but here's where this vehicle really shines now it does get added concealment from the camouflage none of these vehicles have that buff because they're not camouflaged but you could add them 
and see how it changes things. But for right now, it is incredible. It has 40% concealment when it's stationary, 25% on the move. That is 50% more than the standard Hellcat and over 50% for the other vehicles in both categories. Spotting, it gets a nice view range of 382 meters, which is better than all the other ones. However, if you want it to play the other vehicles or you have the standard Hellcat, just run it with binoculars or coated optics and you'll be able to get that view range up. And it has a signal range of 595 meters. Would have been the best if it wasn't for, yet again, the Steyr just being incredible. All that means is it keeps vehicles spotted longer and it's how fast you can relay information about spotted vehicles to your teammates. So if you spot a vehicle, depending on when that view or that signal range is, any vehicles within 595 meters of you will get that spot benefit. That's more of a passive stat, but still important. So all around, this vehicle is made for mobility and spotting. So spot targets move away quickly and you have a gun that can match quick snapshots at moving enemies. It's almost balanced in my mind, like a light tank right now compared to these other tank destroyers. So it's just a very aggressive build for a TD. And we're gonna see how that plays here in a second. I'll play a couple of games and show you my best and my worst and just how I think it performs. And then at the very end of the video, I'm gonna wrap up how I think about this vehicle or how I feel about it rather, what I think about it. And since it's free for anybody who's been playing for six years or more, you can't really lose. Um, great vehicle. I don't think right now on the face of it that anybody who hasn't been playing that long and didn't get this vehicle is missing out on too much because as you just saw, the Steyr Tiger, which is in the garage and in the premium shop, is a better and more aggressive tank destroyer in the sniping role, even though this one is more balanced for active spotting. So if you wanted something similar, but not to move as much, just pick up the Waffentrager or play the tier six Hellcat, run some coded optics, train the crew, maybe put a camo net on there and you'll have a vehicle that stats match this one pretty much identically. So it's not too terrible of a vehicle to miss out on. They still have some pretty strong options as they are, but let's take this thing out into a battle and see how it performs. All right, so first game, we're on the Mannerheim line. We are in a top tier match. I'm going to try to use this thing's excellent mobility and acceleration speed to move up to the A4 position to see if I can get some good spots on some players crossing over the ridge. Usually light tanks and mediums hang out there, so we'll see how it goes. And I'm hoping for an opportunity to really punish some players with this excellent weapon here. Good penetration values, good DPM, so hopefully everything goes really well. And I can do this because of the concealment factor that it's only 25% when moving. I'm not worried about getting spotted across here by light tanks, especially those pesky French wheeled light tanks, which are incredibly aggressive spotters. Push, and then just kind of wait. Nice. Oh wow, he spotted me. Oh wow, I gotta move out. Oh wow. Okay, so that was not great. I did not think that's gonna get spotted that easily. But we did get 638 spotting assist. Now I gotta get out of here before Hardy punishes me. Oh man. All right, so the spotting values, I mean, the concealment values did not really help me there, even though they are great. Obviously, whenever you fire your gun in World of Tanks, you get instantly spotted, and they all hit me in the lower plate, and then one in the upper plate. None of them actually aimed for the pinup girl, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's not so easy a target to spot after all. I'm gonna let the Scorpion go out first. He has better concealment, and he's a lot faster, and I'll let him do the spotting for right now. I really don't want to get hit by that Skoda T25 again. Yeah, um, really, he's using APCR rounds, so dangerous opponent, even though he's just tier 6. Alright, the Scorpion moved up pretty far. Um, nope, he didn't. Or, and the Scorpion did, but the Skoda is still there spotting. 
how he's spotting it, I don't know, and how he's remained hidden this whole time, I have no idea. He must be at C1, way, way back at a rock. Um, yeah, he was. Now he's going to chase the scorpion. Come on, mobility. Well, now I'm way out in the open, so this is kind of a misplay. Ugh, and I auto-aim. Don't do that. Take it from me. Don't auto-aim, because, yeah, not only will you get spotted, but you'll get destroyed. All right, so this is going to be my worst game. It's also my first game I'm going to put in the video. We'll do better next time. That Skoda T25 was just unbelievable with his spotting and concealment. I have no idea how he did that. But huge misplay on my part. When you're playing on this map before I uh, quit and go to the next game, you see where I'm at, the hill on C3. Unless you're a light tank, never, ever, ever cross this ridge here. You see how there's like a depression that splits this in half. One's on this side, one's on that side. Never cross this ridge. Just don't do it. I got over eager and just wanted to punish the T25 because I was getting upset with him. Never cross that line. Don't play like I play. Don't do as I do. Just do what I say, and you'll have a great time. If you play like me, you won't. I'm not that great. But let's get into the next game. Second game. Surprisingly, that game ended as a victory, so my team definitely clutched it for us. So thank you to everybody who was on my team, because that was just really bad. It was bad on my part, but hopefully this will be a good game. Maybe even my best game in the Super Hellcat for this video. But we'll see. We are bottom tier against tier 8s. And still trying to make adva take advantage of this high mobility and good camouflage factor as I come across here. You really don't want to get spotted out here, even with just the one arty. <sighs> Didn't quite get the snapshot that the Scorpion did. The BC 12 ton pulled back, but we'll see. I'm going to try to move way into the back of the J line. Right about here, and see if I can shoot at targets. Alright, 242 into the E25. And as you learned last time, I probably got spotted, even though I have 40% concealment. To move behind the rock. And, uh, readjust. Okay, stunned by already. Yeah, see? I did get spotted. They got a lot of heavy armor moving into this ridge, so I think I'm just going to stay put for now. But pull back until those enemy vehicles start getting spotted. As you saw in the armor portion of this, there's really no armor in the front of this vehicle, so... There's not going to be a lot... I'm not going to have a lot of luck angling this and trying to the incoming shells. Sorry, I'm trying to talk and also aim at the same time. Not as easy as I thought it would be. Can't really multitask. Alright, got some spotting damage for the King Tiger. Don't know how I spotted him, but that's that impressive signal and spotting range coming into play. I'm getting experience for that, and I, I you can see I'm doing nothing in this game since hiding behind a rock and hoping I don't die really quick. I'm going to take a massive risk. Again, probably another misplay, but, you know, I'm going to move up and see if I can shoot into vehicles that are still on the E-line. And hopefully I don't get spotted. Okay, that ricocheted, and I'm spotted. Excuse me. No, oh, please don't let Artie hit me. Ricochet again because I auto aimed. Because I'm getting too nervous. Yeah, he spotted me. Oh. Second shot didn't go in. So the aim time here is actually quite impressive, but as you can see, still really easy to miss snapshots with this kind of a cap with this caliber of weapon. Oh, there's a white tank out there. Right. Okay, I really don't want to be out here right now. I 
can't hit the Alright, so we're getting flanked pretty badly. This is not a position I want to be in. See this? Oh no, I knew it. Mistake. This is a mistake to come out here. Remember, don't do as I do, just do what I say. I am much better, apparently, at telling people what to do than I am at actually playing this game. I want to get a shot off here, but I really do not want to tango with this. Alright. Oh, it was only for four damage. Wow. <laughs> But I got the kill on the Lorraine 40T. Alright. The Onai is taking care of those vehicles out there. The E25 has relocated. Rightly so, to go support that plane. What's. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at the minimap, but don't hit other players because we're looking at the minimap. There's going to be an AMX probably waiting for us. He'll hit me first because I have no armor. So I just want to stay in the back. Oh, the AMX moved up. Okay, and hopefully Artie won't hit me. Using my mobility, kind of go after the Zoo 130 PM. Another turreted tank destroyer. Tier 8, so not tier 7. Alright. Tracked him. I'm just gonna sit behind him. Oh, wow. And the 09 gets him. Yeah, this reload time is actually a lot longer than I thought, but I survived and did 1,000 spotting. Only 500 damage, though, so another bad game for me, but hey, I'll take a victory. Let's see if that best game is still out there, though. Alright, top tier are one of my least favorite maps because I just feel like it's way too small for the tiers that are allowed to play on it. But there's a lot of Super Hellcats in this game. Three on each side. Yeah, see, just like me, this guy has no idea where to go because even with our great camouflage, we're gonna get spotted. <sighs> it's bad. This is a bad map. But let's see if this can be a great game. Just gonna park right up here, G3, and try and spot people crossing down that little bridge there. Which I can't because I don't have the view range to do that. I was sitting back here for no reason. Alright, well, it doesn't look like the enemies took that side. Looks like they're gonna flank us here, so. Let's pull back and reposition. Also, trying to stay already safe. There's a super Hellcat moving up the front. Oh, that's spotted. How is that a miss? Great right, hit him. Really did not like the reload on this vehicle. Didn't think it was going to be a problem. I mean, it's a decent rate of fire. But the accuracy of the gun is balanced by that aim time, which is super fast. So a little less accurate the further out it is. But for real like that, I cannot be afford to I cannot afford to be missing all the shots I have. Just really just skip. But now I got Artie on me. They know I'm here. Ugh. As you can probably tell, I don't play tank destroyers at all. I play medium tanks. So. I decided, hey, why not make a video on something I've never done before? Because <laughs> that's smart. And I can show you guys how good I am and all that. 
Super Hellcat in the valley destroyed. I am way too scared to move from this position. And I'm not the only one. My whole team seems to be camping right now, so... Cool. Oh yes, please. Spot the Panzer IV. Oh, there's another super out there. Why are they all down here? Maybe I should have Great, hit him. Waiting for... I'm gonna have to put a medium gun rammer on this, if I can. Or... Play with food. Because you're really only getting one shot off, and then... The vehicles are already dead by the time you can re-engage. Now that's mostly my fault, because I'm not engaging them as quickly as I ought to be. But... Whatever. I guess I've never done this before. It's a learning experience. We're all learning something today. Oh, that comet's in the open. He, nope, he's dead. Man, I forgot how quick this turnaround was. Like I said, I haven't played this game in a long time. People do not stay spotted for long. Or right, got spotted by that T-3045 who's just watching me. Why, I don't know. I guess because he's like, hey, this guy's been in the back. Well, hold on, not a play. He's done 400 damage. I really wish the T20 would spot him. Hoping to use this house as common. Alright, hit him for 241. Ah, he pulls back. Oh, I'm gonna let my guy die. I feel so bad. Oh, he's, he handled it. The team handled it. Alright, well, not the best game, but did the most damage so far today. One more. One more, and that'll give you my final thoughts on this tank destroyer. Alright, last game on Erlenberg. We are bottomed here again. And hopefully, this one's the best one. So far, I'll take three victories in a row, but it's been pretty much me failing at trying to play tank destroyers. So we'll see. I'm going to try to be a little bit more aggressive this time and push up into the G2 spot around the castle and see if I can take on and brawl with some enemies there. Probably not the best idea, but we'll see. I know there's tank destroyers waiting over here, but they didn't spot me, so that's always good. Always, always, always. Yeah, I'll let the medium tank go first. It's their job. Oh, hey. Another Hellcat. Oh, alright, so now I can kind of see side by side. Alright, yeah. The Hellcat is actually, when it's all upgraded, pretty much the same exact vehicle as you see here. And they even get some 3D stuff. They changed the model. So this isn't as special as I thought, but it's pretty cool. And this is, of course, the solid steel weight that I was talking about earlier. Oh, the Hellcat. Okay, I guess we're all just going to camp here and wait for something to happen. Um, rather not, so I'm going to relocate. Try to say already safe. Not a fan of artillery. Completely forgot how horrible they are and how evil they are. They're horrible and evil. Evil people play artillery. It doesn't seem like anybody on this flank is really doing anything. I don't want to be the first one to do it. I'm just a tank destroyer. Really hoping the Progetto moves up. Alright, we did. Coming back. Alright. Hit me. Yep, 
Okay, 200 wires to be spotted, and I'm not even over there. I really just want this camper. I'm trying to move backwards. But it won't. Alright. I feel like every time I try to relocate, something interesting happens. Not that it matters. Please. I can't see anything. I have a very small window from this position. This is a bad idea. That IS-2-2 two, two is pushing towards our base. It seems like everybody who is on our flank is going to push as well. Yeah. I guess I'll just go and try and brawl with one of the heaviest tanks in the game because it's smart. Actually, my team's got it covered. And then, since the Progetto hasn't done anything, which either I, I so I can't really complain, I'm just going to push this flank. Alone, I guess. This is already not not the best game. But. Hey, who knows? Something could change. Something could go radically right. But they have so many tank destroyers. And, man, I'm going to get zapped so hard. I'm hoping that mobility and that camouflage factor help me out. They don't help you if you just knock over trees. Yep. Then I immediately get spotted by my other American counterpart. Type 27. Or 25. I can't talk. Oh wow, found artillery though. Where he's coming to shotgun, are you serious? <laughs> he killed himself. That's great. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. This is how I die. Wow, completely missed. Yep, and I died. Alright, so another bad game. Not really sure what my team's doing right now. They're all just on D5. The whole team's on D5 trying to fight one Panther M10. It's not even a, not even a heavy medium. So... Awesome. Oh wow, the Progetto decided to do something. There he goes. He got no spotting assist. Nobody shot at that Arty or at that T25. This team is... Alright, well, this is going to end my three win streak and just be a terrible game in general, but... Hey, at least, uh, at least I'm trying. Learning new things. Learning how not to play tank destroyers and how not to trust my team. I don't trust these guys. They're not doing well. Alright, well that last game ended in a pretty bad defeat. Uh, probably didn't help that, I just kind of rushed. So, still don't know how to play tank destroyers, but final thoughts. This is a fun tank destroyer to play. It's a fun vehicle. I love the mobility, love the gun. Don't love the reload. Don't know how it's supposed to get that high DPM. Maybe by hitting more shots and just sniping. I'll figure it out. But for now, if you missed out on this vehicle, I wouldn't be too upset about it. Again, you can make the normal tier 6 Hellcat almost as good. Or you can get the Waffentrage and that would be even better. So either way, at the end of the day, fun vehicle. Fortunately, mostly just me failing to play tank destroyers. And for now, I'm going to stick with medium tanks. I will be posting another video at 11 to complete today's black market. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching.